grade sevens welcome back i'm helen and this is your natural sciences lesson what are we going to focus on today well we're learning all about acids and bases and neutral substances at the moment and our lesson today focuses on acid base indicators and in particular a substance called litmus so let's delve into this interesting topic and see what we're going to learn about today. Now, to remind you, acids, bases, and neutrals are three different kinds of chemicals, and they have different properties. And you've spent a lot of time learning about how to recognize an acid in a base from its different properties. But can you tell just by looking at a substance, if it's an acid, a base, or a neutral. If somebody handed you a bottle of bleach, you have learned that bleach is a basic substance. But what if they've put something else in the bottle of bleach? Sometimes tragic accidents happen because people store acidic or basic substances inside old cold drink bottles. And children think that the substance inside the cold drink bottle is safe to drink because they're familiar with cold drink being inside cold drink bottles. And so they drink the substance and it's either an acid or a very strong base and it harms them. So can we always rely on the properties that we've learned about acids and bases to tell just by looking at it if it's an acid base or neutral? You are given this unknown substance. Here we go. It's colorless. That means it's, it doesn't have a color. It's maybe transparent. It's odorless, meaning it doesn't have a particular smell, so we can't smell that it smells like lemons or that it smells soapy. We don't know what its smell is because we can't smell anything. Is it an acidic substance? Is it a basic substance? Or is it in fact neutral? By looking at this glass of clear liquid, we can't tell. So our friend, the acid, would say, oh well, just taste it. If it tastes sour, it's an acid. But what if it's a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid? It would burn your mouth. It would corrode the pipe leading from your mouth into your stomach. It would harm your stomach. So you can't rely on this property of taste to decide if this is an acidic substance. Our little base says to us, well, touch it. It will feel slippery if it's a base. But what if it's a strong base like hypochlorite, which is present in bleach? It's clear. It doesn't really have a smell. So what if we were to feel it? We could corrode our skin on our hands and damage ourselves. So we're left with a problem. We need a reliable, safe way to test substances to find out if they're acids, bases, or neutrals. We can't go around touching and tasting substances that we don't know precisely what they are. So we need to find some other way of testing a substance and saying, ah, it's an acid. So, let's talk about these lights that we see at the back of cars and at the front of cars. What do those lights tell us? Well, if we're behind this car in traffic, we will see that it is stopped because it's got its brake lights on and it is about to turn in that direction because it has that little flashing yellow light. What are all of these lights called? Do you know what they're called? They are called indicators because they show us some, in some information, but they 
visually show us the information, whether the car is stopped, whether the car is reversing, whether the car is turning left or right. So the word indicate means to show. Now in chemistry, we have certain chemicals which are called indicators that are used to test substances like acids, bases and neutrals. And the acids and bases are going to change the color of the indicator chemical. So the indicator, right, the indicator subject, a substance is going to show us and it's going to show us how by changing color if the substance that it is in is an acid or a base. It's almost magic isn't it? These little indicator substances are often quite fun to experiment with. We're going to learn today about a very simple indicator substance called litmus. Litmus is what we call an acid base indicator and it's a substance that comes from the pigments or dyes in a very interesting organism called a lichen. So let's have a look at that word lichen. It looks like it should be pronounced lichen but we pronounce it lichen. Lichens are very interesting organisms and I'm sure from this photograph as you are looking at it you can say oh but I've seen lichens before. They grow on trees, the, the trunks of trees, they sometimes grow on rocks. I'm sure you have seen lichens in your life. Right, so lichens are interesting organisms. They are composed of an alga, and you're used to seeing alga or algae. Algae are things like seaweeds or pond scum, green pond scum, and a fungus, and you're probably more familiar with fungi like mushrooms that you eat. Well, these are two very specialized algal organisms and fungal organisms, and they live together in symbiosis. The one can't live without the other and they live together and this is what they look like. Here's two different kinds of uh, lichen on this tree trunk. Now a particular lichen is used and it is boiled down to extract the pigment and then special, very special neutral filter paper is soaked in that extract and it's left to dry. And then we have what we call litmus paper. And there are two kinds of litmus paper depending on which kind of lichens we used to make the paper. So we can get red litmus paper and we can get blue litmus paper. Now what do these two different kinds of chemical indicators, what do they do? Remember they've got to indicate or show us something if we put them into an acid or a base. Well here's, here's what happens. If we have an acid and we put blue litmus paper into the acid, there we are, We've dipped our blue litmus paper in. Where it touches the acid, the litmus paper turns red. But if we put it into a base, that litmus paper would stay blue. So here's a nice interesting way of, of remembering it. B for blue and B for base. Litmus paper that is blue stays blue in a base. But if you pop it into an acid, it's going to become red. Now notice that the rest of the acid doesn't turn red. The indicator doesn't interfere with the acid at all. The indicator paper, the litmus, doesn't change the acid. The acid changes the litmus. Right? We need to understand that 
indicators don't change the substance they're being dipped into. The substance they're being dipped into changes them. All right, let's turn our attention now to red litmus paper. So we're going to take some red litmus paper and here we have an alkaline solution or a basic solution. Now if we put the red litmus paper into the alkaline solution, we see that the red litmus turns blue. And remember we said B for blue, B for base. So this red litmus paper has indicated to us that it is in a basic or alkaline solution. If we had to take red litmus paper and we put it into an acid, the red litmus paper would stay red. So this is a very fancy way we have of saying, all right, we can take that colorless, odorless substance and let's take a piece of red litmus paper and a piece of blue litmus paper. Let's dip them both in and then we'll be able to see. If the blue litmus paper turns red and the red litmus paper stays red, we know that that substance is an acid. Now let's test some substances using litmus paper. I have told you that bleach is a base. What if we were to put red litmus paper into the bleach and a piece of blue litmus paper into the bleach? What changes would we see to these two pieces of litmus paper? Well, we know that blue litmus is going to turn red in an acid, but it's going to stay blue in a base. B for blue, B for base. So we're going to put our red litmus in and what's going to happen? The red only stays red in an acid. It's going to turn blue. So the red litmus paper is going to turn blue, but the blue litmus paper is in a base, so it's going to stay blue. We've learnt that oranges contain citric acid and ascorbic acid. They're acidic substances. What then is going to happen if we put red litmus paper onto the orange? Remember, red litmus paper is going to be turning blue if it comes into contact with the base, but it's going to stay red because the, the orange is acidic. The blue litmus paper, however, is going to turn red because it's in contact with an acid. Do you see how this is working? Soap. We know that soap and toothpaste, for example, let's do the two together, are basic substances or alkaline solutions. We're going to pop the red litmus paper into the base and what's going to happen to it? It's going to turn blue. But if we put the blue litmus paper in, it stays blue in a base. You try the pool acid and you try the cold drink, which has got phosphoric acid in it. If we put the red litmus paper into the acid, it's going to stay red. If we put the blue litmus paper into an acid, it's going to turn red. So we see that litmus paper can tell us if an unknown substance is an acid or a base or an alkaline solution. So we always test with both a red and a blue piece of litmus paper to do a double check to make sure that the substance is showing us the properties of acids or the properties of the chemical properties of bases. So we've learned now that we have an indicator that can help us determine whether something is an acid and a base. We don't have to always rely on our sense of taste or our sense of touch. 
which could be dangerous if we're talking about strong acids and strong bases. That's it for today. I'll see you next time when we learn more about acids and bases. But for today, goodbye. Thank you.